Okay, great. Thanks, Sarah. All right. Um, mm, okay, thank you very much, uh, James, for organizing this mini symposium. Uh, so the same as what uh, Pete said, uh, my talk is also have uh, some overlap with my talk in uh, some, um, life science, but uh, I try to make some changes. Um, so in that talk, I talked about uh, single oscillators mostly. Uh, today I want to talk about a network of oscillators, which each oscillator is, is driven by a common noise, and there is some connection between uh, the oscillators, and this connection is also uh, noisy. And my goal is to understand uh, some synchronization behaviors of uh, such systems. Um, All right, good. So uh, let me start with um, one um, motivation example. So we know that a coupled noisy, a coupled oscillators, in fact, are very important for modeling biological systems and physical systems. Uh, in particular, I'm interested in modeling um, animal locomotion and understand different gait patterns in uh, insects. So uh, insects have like six um, legs, which each leg is leg is governed by a network of uh, neurons called central pattern generators, which uh, produce a ryth rhythmic behavior. And each of these rhythms is uh, governed by um, a system of three uh, equations uh, called bursting neuron model, uh, which produce a burst, a sequence of spikes, uh, which represent the stance of each step, and a quiescent uh, duration, which is, which is corresponding to uh, the swing. So there are six legs. Each leg is governed by three equations. We have uh, 18 equations. And we assume that the CPGs or uh, legs are connected to their nearest neighbor with synaptic coupling. So we also consider one equation for each leg uh, to uh, connect uh, with the other legs. So in total, total, we have 24 uh, nonlinear uh, equations which describe this system. Uh, we are interested in uh, understanding uh, synchronization or cluster synchronization or phase locking in uh, such systems. So. Okay, uh, so phase reduction is in fact a key tool uh, to reduce these 24 equations into only uh, six phase equations. So that's what I, um, I want to, to use here. And we know that the city state phase differences in uh, these coupled oscillators determine the locomotion uh, gate and gives us different gates. However, the data is uh, noisy and what we want to understand is that how noise would affect uh, different uh, synchronization patterns in uh, in, in gates and in uh, insect locomotion. So my talk has like two parts today. Uh, so in the first part, I drive a, a coupled phase equation for a network of uh, stochastic uh, oscillators. And then I move on to the second part of the talk, which uh, is finding some conditions uh, on these networks to uh, guarantee synchronization. Okay, so let me start with the first part. Um, it, talk about this uh, phase reduction. I, I want to use uh, the same uh, phase reduction, uh, but for, um, okay, so we have a system x at equal to x. Again, we have a limit cycle for this system, and we define phase on the limit cycle. Um, my phase is called phi here, and um, I also define phase map on the neighborhood on a basin of attraction of the limit cycle, and I have isochron, which are the levels, level sets of the phase map. I, I don't want to uh, spend more time on this, uh, but I use the notion of phase response curves here, and I assume that um, we make a perturbation, small perturbation uh, to a point on the limit cycle, and we know that this point may uh, end up in some other isochrons, not the original isochron, and this would um, lead to this would uh, end up to leading or lagging the the current phase for um, for for the point. So here, that's how we define the phase response curve, which is the gradient of the phase map for each point on the limit cycle. We make a perturbation and we measure the phase difference, and this gives us a phase response curve. Um, and this is just the phase response curve of the bursting neuron uh, model, which I uh, showed you in the beginning. All right. Um, so for deterministic oscillators, um, any kind of perturbation, assuming that the perturbation is weak enough, so epsilon is the uh, uh, intensity of the perturbation, and we assume that it's very small, as long as this is a small and um, 
the point is staying the basal contraction of the limit cycle, uh, then the perturbation uh, contribute to the phase equation by uh, the phase response curve convolving the perturbation. So that's what we so we will use uh, a lot uh, later. And if um, the dynamics, the full dynamics, would reduce to omega, which is just the frequency of limit cycle. Okay, uh, and this is used a lot for um, many um, in, in cyclic locomotion, uh, including uh, the the one that we, we study. So we study this um, phase reduction, and this G the perturbation could be from environment or could be from any um, other neurons networks uh, to the, to to F. Okay. So what about the noisy oscillators? Uh, it's the same when we have a single <clears throat> oscillator, which is noisy, and the noise uh, can be defined by sigma times uh, state-dependent depend noise uh, B of x times a winner increment. We also assume that it's a uh, uh, Ito um, stochastic differential equation. So to reduce uh, this system, we need a second order phase response curve, which is in fact the Hessian of the phase map. So remember, phase response curve is the gradient of phase map. Now we need the second, uh, uh, we need the Hessian of the phase map, which is the second order phase response curve and we uh, show it by H. And um, to reduce this system, uh, so remember that F gives us omega as before, as a, as a deterministic case. And uh, the perturbation is stochastic, it's fine. We just multiply Z by this factor here. And then we have one extra factor which comes from um, eta derivative of the phase map, okay? So we have uh, one more term compared to the deterministic case. Now we want to uh, put these together in a network of uh, oscillators. Suppose that we have capital N identical noisy oscillators which are weakly coupled. So each oscillator um, is described by deterministic system F, which is nonlinear and R-dimensional. And these are all driven by a common noise, which we describe by sigma times B of Xi times DW. So these are all common for all the uh, oscillators. And then we have coupling between the oscillators described by epsilon times G. And we assume that this coupling is also noisy described by delta times C times DWIJ. And um, I will talk about CIJ later, uh, which is the, in fact, the weight on uh, each connection. So here to use the phase reduction technique, we need to have epsilon, delta, and sigma, the, in, the intensity of the perturbations to be small. And okay, we have, we see a complicated um, equation here, but it's uh, really um, not very complicated. So the first term F gives omega as before. So we have three terms here uh, which contribute to the perturbation. We need to multiply all these terms by Z to get um, the corresponding terms for phase equation. And then we have two terms, sigma squared divided by two times trace of B transpose HP. And we have the same for uh, the other C which is corresponding to um, the Ito derivative of the phase map. Uh, when we have these two stochastic terms in the system, okay? Um, so the, we want, so the goal is now we have, instead of R times N a dimensional system, we have an N dimensional system. So we have a network, um, which each uh, system in the network is just one dimensional, which is the, the phase of each oscillator. And uh, we want to study the synchronization behavior of the system. So the right-hand side here is non-autonomous. And since we want to study the synchronization, we want to understand um, theta i minus theta j, the dynamics of theta i minus theta j. So it's better to get rid of omega here. And here I define a new variable, phi i, which is theta i minus omega t. And I use the averaging principle for SDE, which is um, the corresponding averaging, it's the same as the averaging theory for a deterministic systems that we know. Um, and uh, again, using uh, these uh, two tools, we, we just reduce it and we have the DPI. Uh, so each oscillator again, I mean, from now on, we don't, we really don't need to um, um, assume anything except that um, F, K tilde, H and K, they are all one dimensional, they're all nonlinear and um, of course, for when we when we, they come from the phase reduction of oscillators, they need 
uh, to depend on uh, B, C, and first order and second order phase response curve. So it's going to be very complicated. I, I'm not going to show you this, uh, but this is the system that we have. And the goal is to find some conditions um, that foster synchronization in such a network. And again, from now on, we don't need to assume that epsilon, delta, and sigma are small. Uh, but if we want to apply it to um, phase reduction equations, we need to assume that these are small. All right. So let me just introduce a notation here. Um, so the network, the, the systems are connected by a weighted undirected graph, G. And that CIJ that I showed you before is uh, just the um, weight on the graph. If there is any, any connection between two nodes, uh, CIJs are positive and CIJ is equal to CJI. It's an undirected graph. And if there is no connection, uh, the weight is zero. So we can write a Laplacian matrix for this graph. And we know that Laplacian matrix is symmetric. And their eigenvalues that start from zero. And the second eigenvalue um, showing by lambda to C is non-zero if the graph is connected and this term here is called algebraic connectivity of g so this means that if lambda 2 is large the graph is very well connected if lambda 2 is small the graph is not well connected so it goes all, all the way to lambda and c the last eigenvalue and we will use these two eigenvalues um, later in our calculations okay so i want to talk about stochastic uh, synchronization so let me uh, use two uh, definitions for stochastic stability. So one of them is exponential uh, stability in mean square, which means that if a, a solution of a, of a system is exponentially stable in mean square, if for any other solution, which is start in a neighborhood of uh, the initial condition of this solution X, then um, the expected value of the square of the difference between these two solutions is bounded by a constant times e to the minus ct, which C is positive. Okay, and we also use almost sure exponential stability. Um, so in this case, we, we replace this, this inequality by the limb super of one over t log of the difference between the two solutions. And we assume that this is negative, which is, this is the same as uh, Lyapunov exponent. Okay, so I will use these uh, two definitions for stability. Um, now I need to uh, define synchronization, stochastic synchronization. Um, so an invariant set in SDE uh, is a set that if you start from the set, you will stay there uh, with probability one. And a synchronization manifold is a set S uh, of the points X, which all the uh, entries in X is, are the same. And if this, is, this set is a stochastically invariant, means if you start from the set, we will stay there with probability one. And if any solutions in S is a stochastically stable in one of the sense of the two definitions that I gave you. Um, and a, a network is called a stochastically, syn uh, called, uh, stochastically synchronized if it admits a synchronization manifold. So this means that uh, for any solution X, there exists some little c and capital C and some uh, solution in the synchronization uh, manifold, which one of these two conditions satisfy. Okay. All right. So here is uh, the main result that we got. Um, so we have a network of stochastic uh, systems. I don't call it oscillators. It could be any system. And we have some conditions for intrinsic dynamics, uh, which is kind of Lipschitz condition. We, we need the coupling to be odd and it satisfies this condition. It needs a lower bound. And the diffusion uh, matrices for uh, the stochastic terms uh, also need to um, satisfy these growth conditions. So some of these conditions are necessary for the uh, existence of the solutions of SDE, but some of them are also needed for uh, synchronization. So for <clears throat> these uh, bounds that we have here, uh, I mean, well, with these conditions, any solution satisfy uh, this inequality. So if you look at this inequality, this is exactly the same as uh, stability in mean square. And uh, we have a um, solution phi, and we have another solution, uh, which is the average of these solutions. So psi, psi, psi is a vector which is in the synchronization manifold. Now, if C is negative, 
which C, I will talk about C later uh, in next slide. So if C, sorry, sorry if C is positive, uh, then we have synchronization. Okay, so let me tell you what this C is. So C is um, just a quantity which depends on all the bounds of these functions that are involved in the network. It depends on the uh, coupling strength and noise, is, noise in, uh, strength in the network, and also depends on the eigenvalues of the underlying uh, graph. So it makes sense. And if I want to get back to the phase equations for uh, oscillators, um, these are getting a little bit complicated, um, but they, they depend on B, which is the diffusion matrix of the original system. And they also depend on the phase, phase response curves, uh, first order and second order. So we can design B, so that's the goal, that design B such that um, C maximized, okay? Or C uh, bar F and C bar K tilde um, minimized because they appear with negative sign uh, in C, okay? But this um, C, Okay, C being positive is a sufficient condition for uh, synchronization, right? Um, however, you see that delta and sigma, which are the noise int intensities, appear in a negative sign. So this means that noise uh, doesn't help for synchronization. And also, um, we have some systems that C is uh, negative. So we improved our results and we needed a further condition, some lower bound for our diffusion matrices and we could improve our result for any C negative. And in this case, we see that uh, the noise has also positive contribution uh, to synchronization. Um, in this theorem, we use the other definition of a stability though, uh, which I, I think uh, uh, it's fine. It's just another um, definition of a, stabi a stochastic stability. Okay, so um, here is a numerical example. When uh, we have a, a network of stochastic systems, which uh, there is no common noise and the system doesn't synchronize. But when we add the common noise, the system starts to synchronize. Or on the other hand, uh, we have a system which uh, there is no interaction noise. I mean, we, they, we have interaction, but the interaction is not noisy. We only have the common noise and the system doesn't synchronize, but we add the interaction noise um, and the system starts to synchronize, okay? So I think, so uh, let me just say one more time what I said. Uh, so in this talk, I just talked about um, phase reduction for coupled noisy oscillators using first and second order phase response curve. And then I talked about synchronization in a network of nonlinear systems, which are driven by state dependent common noise, and uh, they are coupled through uh, state dependent uh, noisy interactions. I gave uh, two conditions for synchronization and uh, the future direction is to generalize these uh, results to direct the graph because as I showed you in the beginning of the talk, uh, the CPGs in, uh, in, in insect, they are connected uh, through, uh, Andre, through directed, directed graph. Uh, so we want to apply uh, these results to animal locomotion eventually. All right, um, I think that's it. Yeah. Thank you, Zara, that was very interesting. Um, so please, uh, flag your questions. Um, I have a quick question. Zara, you said um, you have interaction noise, and you said that leads to synchronization, which seemed to me counterintuitive. If you could go to your slide on that, I'll just. Uh, uh, yeah, I was just wondering. Yeah, so if you have if you have noise in your interactions, wouldn't that lead to desynchronization? Because, I mean, it's if the noise is independent, then it's just going to be pushing them, like keeping them further apart on average, right? So it really depends on uh, the, the the matrix that you have. Um, um, I mean, the the, um, the matrix uh, or the function uh, k that you have the coupling because it's also uh, a nonlinear uh, noise, right? So here, uh, this is an example that uh, when we have no interaction, it's not um, it's, there, there's no synchronization, but we add interaction noise, we get synchronization, right? Uh huh. Uh -huh. So, so both noise, I mean, both noises, they, they, can, they can kill the synchronization. That's what we see, for example, in this formula in C, uh, because of, let's say that C, uh, these two parts are positive, but we are subtracting something. But again, this is just a sufficient condition, right? 
Um, but in the other formula, uh, we have, um, so the Lyapunov exponent is alpha one minus alpha two squared. Alpha one is positive, and we want this to be negative, but alpha two is um, making the contribution to synchronization, and it appears that both sigma and delta are there. And I think this is just a very simple, uh, just numerical example. We don't have any uh, physical interpret interpretation for this example, but it uh, very well shows that both could uh, um, foster synchronization in the system. Hmm. Yeah, interesting, very interesting. I'll have to read your paper, thanks, Sarah. Are there any other questions? I've got a question. Yes. Uh, so thanks. A fascinating talk. It's really interesting. Um, so my question is, uh, suppose I start with a description of my individual oscillators that's two-dimensional or higher dimensional, and they're coupled with the same kind of uh, coupling and, and uh, noise dynamics. Um, if I meet the condition for synchronization, what that means is that their phases would be synchronized. Would I expect the other parts of the, the other dimensions to be uh, synchronized as well? Or would I, so they're moving sort of on the same isochron as each other uh, once, once they've synchronized in your framework, but what's happening, what would, be, what would you guess could be happening with the other dimensions? Okay, uh, it's a very good question. So the point is that, um, so if you want to use these uh, techniques for phase equations, I mean, if you have, a, for example, a many-dimensional system and it's easier for you to reduce it to a phase equation, I think this is just for phase. I don't have any, I don't have any intuition if you can get back to the full system and you still have synchronization. But uh, the point is that uh, this theorem here is valid for any dimensional system. So this is not just for phase. This is not just for one dimensional system. You can prove this theorem for any dimensional system. So you can use okay. this directly into uh, directly to your full system. So that's what I'm saying. So the phi I don't have to be on the circle, on they separate don't. circles. No, no they oh, don't. I see. Well, I proved it for one dimensional because I wanted to use for phase uh, reduction um, first. I mean, I started from like backward, but uh, it's really easy to, I mean, it, it's, it's nothing to just generalize this to n-dimensional system. Thanks. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's very interesting, Zara. Thank you. Thanks a lot for that. Um, maybe we'll move down next speaker, if that's right. Um, Max, uh, it's Matt, actually. That's right. Okay. Make, make Matt's host. Just one second, sorry. So do you say Matt, Matthew or Max? Sorry, I, I, I made Matthew, Matthew. Matthew. Okay, good, great. Okay, yeah. great. You're muted, Matt. Matt. Uh, 